Hello and welcome back to part two of the Into the Continuum tutorial series. My name is John Dickinson. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how I added sparks and reflections and glows to polish up the scene we created in part one. So let's jump in. Okay, so in part one, we created the Title Studio text. That's the Into the Continuum text. And we also created the Seamless Psych and added a camera and we split the seamless psych out into its own title studio effect and into its own composition and we also added a camera in here and we linked it up by using the edit copy with property links command so that's where we got up to and that was a step-by-step -step tutorial this tutorial is going to be a little bit different i'm not going to take you step by step through everything that i did but rather i'm going to walk you through the things that i did and also talk a little bit about the creative decisions that I made. So let's just close up the main and Title Studio comp. And this is my main composition. So here's the seamless psych, and here's the camera. And there's a number of layers here which I have turned off, which I want to walk you through. So these are the things that I did to enhance the 3D scene that was created in part one. Things like adding a half tone effect, adding some blurs, and a fake reflection and a fake lighting effect and also adding some sparks now the first thing i did for this psych was to just come into the title studio effect here in the effect control panel and just adjust the contrast you can see under composite i've actually set the contrast to 10. if we bring that back to zero you can see everything looks a little bit flatter but by increasing that just increases the contrast and gives this a kind of a vignette look Notice we are getting a fair bit of banding in this, and that's never a good look. One way to fix banding is to add a little bit of noise to the composition. You can see I've already got this set to 16-bit, so it's not the color depth that's causing the problem. And I didn't really want to add noise, so I decided to use the halftone effect. Now, I've applied the halftone effect to a new solid, and I'm using the BCC halftone effect, one of my favorite effects. And perfect for this kind of look because, of course, this is based on the Into the Spider-Verse look. And you'll find BCC Halftone in the Art Looks category. Just here. So, if I turn this on, watch what happens to the banding. I just need to move a few frames down. We can't actually see it on the first frame, and I'll explain that in a moment. Here we go. So you can see the banding has basically completely disappeared, which is great. So this helps fix the banding, but it also helps add a bit of character to this background. I actually ended up putting the halftone effect in quite late when I was developing this. And I thought that the background looked a little bit drab and you know, a little bit left out, but by adding the halftone effect, it just gives it more of a fun, interesting look and brings it more in line with the rest of the look of the spot. The other thing it also does is darkens it down a little bit, which is really good. But by adding it, I also had to make it 3D. Otherwise, it um, wouldn't move with the camera, and that would look a bit strange. You can see if I just move the current time indicator, you see it actually moves with the camera now because that layer is 3D. And as I mentioned, you can't see it on frame one, and it doesn't matter anyway because on the very first frame, the next layer I've used is this black solid. What I really wanted, if we turn the text back on, what I really wanted at the very beginning is the background to be pretty much black. That's because in part one, we talked about the idea that this was the base text, like the off state. And when we move forward in the animation, the letters turn on, like their lights turning on. And I didn't want it to be too bright at the beginning. I wanted to feel like as the lights turned on, then the background would become illuminated. So I turned on this solid. I've called it Psych Darkener. You see at the very beginning, it's, it's black. If I press the U key to show the keyframes, you can see I've got opacity at 100%. And towards the end of the camera zoom, we come down to the opacity of zero. That's a really nice way to fake the lighting. Nice and dark, and then 
the lighting increases as the letters turn on. Now, as the letters turn on, I wanted to really enhance the effect that lights were turning on and have it look as if the letters were illuminating the scene. So for that, I faked it once again by duplicating the text layer and blurring it with BCC Gaussian Blur. Let me just turn that on. And what I might do is just solo that layer. Say, so turn the BCC Gaussian Blur off and on. You can see it's really quite blurred. Let me just bring that right down. It's a nice fast blur. I wanted to blur it out quite a lot because obviously I didn't want to see the text, but I wanted to see the, the brightness that the text creates on the background. So let's turn these back on and turn it on and off. So obviously, as the text gets brighter, then the background appears to get brighter because I've used the screen blend mode. That's a nice way to fake that lighting effect. And actually, when we get up to the other parts of the animation, you can see the background really lights up a lot because we're adding a lot of brightness in the foreground, which is really quite effective. Just with a simple BCC Gaussian Blur. Next thing to do was add a reflection in the floor. Now, Tidal Studio doesn't have ray tracing, so it's not straightforward to do reflections in the floor. I found it much easier to do it in After Effects just using BCC Reflection. Let me just turn that on and just move forward a little bit. You can see the reflections moving in. So I've actually had to do this inside of a pre-comp. Let me just double click that. So there's the text and there's a reflection. And just to mention, I've actually named my text comp FX because inside FX is the into the continuum text composition and inside that is the title studio text composition we created in part one. But we're going to dig into all of that in other tutorials. So just in case you're wondering why this is named into the continuum FX. So there's the BCC reflection effect, really handy for creating quick reflections. But currently BCC reflection doesn't have a reflection only option. And I wanted to isolate the reflection in the main comp. So that's why I've done it in a pre-comp. I've also added a few keyframes because this isn't a real 3D reflection. So it's not really moving with the text as the camera moves. So I've actually had to animate the position XY of BCC reflection so that you can see the point, the control point here, so that the reflection appears to move back with the text, but actually it's only animating on a 2D plane. So that's actually faked. If I just grab that and drag it, you can see that's what I'm doing. So that's a bit of a fake there. And at the end, I also keyframed it to go out again. Now, I just wanted to briefly point out that BCC reflection actually is a 3D effect. And you may have noticed that it also has a use comp camera option, just as Tyler Studio does. So you may be wondering why I didn't use the use comp camera option. And I could have, but you'll notice down here under reflection plane, there's an auto fit reflection option. If I click that and I change the Z position on the camera, the reflection does in fact lock on to the Boris FX text. But I wanted my reflection to be much lower in the scene because the text is not sitting on the seamless psych, it's actually sitting above it. So the reflection would be somewhere down here. So in order to set that up here, I would have to uncheck auto fit reflection and then adjust the position X, Y. Watch what happens now when I change the Z position. See how the reflection is no longer locked onto the text and that wasn't gonna be effective. So I could have used this to change the position of the reflection, um, but it didn't really make much sense. It was just as easy to not use this in 3D and just animate the Y position on the BCC reflection effect. So just wanted to jump out here and just explain that. So adding the reflection inside the pre-comp, 
allows me in the main comp to mask that out. So let me just solo that. And there's the mask reflection. You see, I've also dropped the opacity right down to 10%. Just turn these layers back on again. And that just makes a big difference, just 10%, but it still really helps sell this. Just got to turn the text back on, of course. One thing I haven't mentioned uh, as far as lighting goes is that there's a slight glow on the text, and that's been done using BCC Fast Film Glow, one of my favorite glow effects. You'll find BCC Fast Film Glow in the film category. BCC film style. And you can see that really makes a big difference. Makes it look a little bit more like this is illuminated. Also a curves effect here. Just to adjust the output from Tidal Studio. Let's turn that on and off. You don't always get exactly what you want inside the 3D applications. So using a little bit of curves, you can see, especially on the extrusions, using a little bit of curves just to drop the shadows a bit and just increase the highlights. Just crushes that down a little bit and helps me zero in on exactly the luminance that I want. Okay, so the last thing to talk about here is the sparks. And the sparks really help sell this. I decided to add some sparks just to make this look a little more fun. and they look surprisingly effective, even though they're 2D particles in Particle Illusion. They really look like the particles are bouncing off the seamless psych. So let's jump in and take a look at how that was done. And it was done using BCC Particle Illusion. Particle Illusion is part of Continuum, and you'll find it in the Particles category. But also Particle Illusion is a standalone app that you can download for free. One of the benefits of using it in Continuum is that I can use it with a background image. And here I've applied it to the text. You can see under Composite, Composite Style is set to Alpha plus Apply Mode, and Apply Mode is set to None. I'm just going to take that back to Normal, and there's my text. So let's launch Particle Illusion. So I've got two particle bursts, two spark bursts, and as the particles fall down, they're hitting an invisible floor, and that's done using a deflector. And rather than walking you through step by step how to build this emitter, I'm going to just cancel this for a moment, and just duplicate this layer, turn off my original, I'm going to reset particle illusion, and let's just go back in. So rather than walk you through every single step that I used to create the sparks, although I just mentioned that I did build this particular sparks look based on one of the presets, and then what I did was to create a preset from this particular emitter. And I've already saved this for you, so you can grab this from the download link. It's called Into the Continuum Sparks. Now I've saved this into a new custom library, and if I just grab this window here, all you'll do is download the into the continuum sparks.il3 file and drag it into your user emitter libraries folder, which is inside your Boris FX folder. On the PC, that's inside your program data folder on your local disk. So once you've done that, just restart Particle Illusion. And if you do a search for into, that should pop up. And it's only got one custom emitter in it. So to add that to the scene, just double click. And just play that back. So obviously it's emitting way too many sparks at the moment. So all I did to control that was, first of all, position it where I wanted it to emit. And I think I put it on this U. So when this light turned on, I wanted to get the feel like it was kind of, I don't know, like a neon that was faulty. And just shot out a couple of sparks. and. That makes it look a little more interesting, a little more fun. We'll just move that across onto that point there. So I wanted to start emitting from there, so I'm going to move the emitter to start from there. 
but I'd also have to animate the number. So I'll set a linear keyframe and just move forward a couple of frames and just change that number to zero. That way it's only going to emit a couple of particles. Like that. And obviously if you wanted more from the start, just increase that number. And that gives you that nice hit of sparks. I did also though want the the hot spot, which actually here I've named hot core, which is a particle that is attached to the emitter. I did want it to kind of stay in the same position, even though the text moves. So it creates kind of like a you know a hot metallic spot on the text. So to do that, what I had to do was just set some keyframes for position X, Y. So set a linear keyframe at the start, just move until the particles have all been emitted. Click and drag that to try and get it onto the spot. I can always roll my mouse wheel in a little bit. And there. Come back to the middle, just make sure that's sticking. We add another keyframe there. So once again, faking this. And that way the hotspot kind of moves with the text. Like that. A little bit rough, it just requires a little bit of refinement. Depends on how long the hotspot lasts. Maybe you just have to bring it over a little bit more at the end. So that's the emitter done. You can see at the moment that we do have motion blur turned on and we are getting some separation in the particles. So if I come up to the view menu and choose project settings, it's going to change the motion blur from four to 16. And that's better, that gives you an unbroken streak. And the only other thing I wanted to do, which I think really sells this, is to have them look as if they're bouncing off the floor. And to do that, I use a deflector. By coming up here and clicking on deflector, and clicking in the scene once, and then double clicking to create a two point line. You can already see the particles are starting to bounce. Just like that. But in order to make it look like it's falling on a 3D plane, you need to increase the thickness amount. And this really helps sell it. Just like that. So actually really quite effective considering that currently Particle Illusion isn't 3D particle generator. So I'm just going to click apply. And once that was set up, once again just coming into composite style, choosing alpha plus apply mode, and just making sure apply mode is set to none. Because all I want in this composition is the particles. I want to keep them separate from the actual text. So I'm just going to delete that one, turn my original one back on, and set that to none, just like that. Come back into main. And because the text has a reflection, well, I figured the particles needed a reflection as well. And I thought, well, I could use BCC reflection, but this is a little trickier. If I turn BCC reflection on, the problem with this is that the reflections don't sit directly beneath the particles because these obviously aren't actually distributed in 3D. They're only on a single flat plane. So you're never going to be able to get it to look like the reflection sitting under every particle. For this, it was a very simple solution, just duplicating the sparks layer and using BCC directional blur. Just turn that on. So with and without directional blur, we get that. Now obviously the particles that are still moving are also getting the blur, but that's okay. Really quite effective for making it look as if these particles are distributed on a 3D plane and are giving a realistic ray trace reflection.
It really helps sell it. So some minor adjustments to the contrast of the psych, adding the halftone effect to get rid of the banding and also to give this a more interesting look for the background. A little black solid just to darken it up at the start to make it really quite dark. Blurring the into the continuum checks to give this a fake lighting effect that appears to affect the background. Adding a fake reflection. And also adding some sparks in particle illusion and a fake reflection for the sparks. And I think the result is actually pretty convincing. So now that this is all set up, in the next tutorial, we'll start breaking down the graphical treatments that I created to really give this the Into the Spider-Verse feel. So thanks for watching, and be sure to visit BorisFX.com to take a free trial of Continuum, and to see more videos about all of the BorisFX products.